Every day, China is inventing the technology that will change the future of our world. And in today's video, I've traveled to Guangzhou, China to visit Xiaopeng Aerohole, the world's number one maker of flying cars. Let's take to the sky. Now, everybody, today's video is going to be action packed. We're going to bring you behind the scenes to learn the history of how flying cars first started all the way back in 2013. Inside this building has all the prototypes, all the history, but most importantly, it has the flying cars and the technology that are literally going to change how the future of our world functions. This is a behind the scenes look that you're not going to find anywhere else. So let's travel to the future. Well, everybody, as we start today's tour, I've got a special guest here. This is Zach from Zach in China, fellow hello, YouTuber. How are you hey. today, Zach? I'm feeling great. And uh, hello, guys. This is Zach from Zach in China. I'm very happy to help arrange this exclusive tour at Xpeng SQ. Yeah. And uh, I think you guys are going to love what you're going to see here today because um, this is one of the best, one of the most leading enterprises here in Guangdong. Yeah, that's so exciting. Well, everybody, you know, Zach, I'm so excited to have you here as well because what I love to see is I love to see new creators coming to the platform, but most importantly, I love to see Chinese creators coming on YouTube. So congratulations to, you know, the success that you've had on your channel. We're going to drop his channel link down below. But most importantly, you know, we're here in Guangdong. We're here live in Guangzhou at Xiaopeng, uh, you know, facility here. And this facility makes exclusive flying cars, right? Nothing exactly. else here. And, you know, you're also, Zach, you're a Guangzhou native. So I want to know a little bit more about this province. You know, why do we see so much technology, you know, coming from here in Guangdong? Well, uh, first of all, Guangdong is the richest province inside of China. Everything you might know about China, like DJI drones, Huawei phones, Tencent, Xpeng, electric vehicles, many of them, like all of them, they are from the province Guangdong. Yeah. And uh, Xpeng uh, is one of the biggest EV producers in China. But what separates Xpeng, like really from other uh, EV brands is that they make incredible flying vehicles. And that's why we're here today. Well, everybody, we're here with Alex from Xiaopeng Aero. Alex, so nice to meet you today. So nice to meet you, Thank Cyrus. you. Thank you for having us out of the facility. This photo caught my eye. Tell me more about this iconic photo, which was really the start of the flying car revolution here in China. For sure. So this photo is actually a photo of our founder, Mr. Zhao Deli himself, flying his very first prototype known as the flying motorcycle. And you see, as you can see, this is a real photo. He's about 90, 100 meters in the sky and, right. you know, really brave soul for deciding to, to test this himself and fly it himself. The roots of this company and where this started was back in 2013. And over the last 12 years, the company has grown a lot. I mean, obviously the concept of a flying car 12 years ago was maybe just a dream. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more as we go through when we look at this history. In 2020, this was a massive year for us at our company. Uh, this is when uh, our founder, Mr. Zhao Deli, met He Xiaopeng, who is the CEO of Xpeng Motors. Uh, this is when He Xiaopeng really saw the future of flying cars. He really saw the potential that Mr. Zhao Deli and his team had and decided to, to formally invest and formally create our company known as Xpeng Aero today. All right, so Alex, we've come to one of three floors here at the headquarters, and this is research and development. Yeah, yeah. And this is a big part of what Xiaopeng Aerohold is doing. Mm -hmm. How many people are working in the R&D in this one location alone? So here in Guangzhou, we have about 1,300 uh, personnel just for R&D. Yeah, and how much of people, how much percentage of the employees for Xiaopeng Aerohold are actually working right here in R&D? About 85%. 85%, so guys, this is actually one of the biggest strategic advantages for China and many Chinese tech companies is that it is very common for 80, 85% of all employees working here in R&D. So as we're walking through here, we're not allowed to film the computers because this is all secret technologies that they're working on. Of course, this is where the R&D is happening. This is where the innovation is happening, Alex. Well, everybody, it's so much fun to spend time with Alex and learn more about the history, but now we're gonna show you these amazing prototypes and let's go back to where it all started with the very first flying car prototype that debuted in 2013. Well, everybody, this is a piece of history that is actually really incredible here. This is the very first prototype that actually flew when the founder of the company himself was buying parts on Taobao, right? This would be the Chinese equivalent of Amazon. Imagine buying different parts, putting together this together in your garage and actually making what they call the 
flying motorcycle. Tell us a little bit about this original prototype, Alex, that you know is now kind of encased in this glass and a huge part of your history here. As you can see, Cyrus, this is very much uh, more like a drone that, that, that resembles a flying car. Zhao Dali and his team made this back in, they started creating this prototype back in 2013. Uh, and the very first successful flight was not only until three years later, 2016. Uh, as you can see, the visible wear and tear from the flights and the test crashes, Mr. Jodali was very brave to fly this car. Well, everybody, this is the T1 prototype. This is from 2018, the third generation of flying cars. And you can see, this is some pretty cool technology here. This is basically a one-seater. I've got two joysticks on both of my left and right. Alex, this is pretty amazing technology. Tell us about this very first prototype. All right, well, you're looking at the T1. Uh, this is a third-generation flying car here at Expo Aero, and this won the Idea Design Award in Germany. Well, Alex, so this is the prototype three. I want to go to prototype four, which seems a little bit different design here, and you can start to see how the actual flying car is starting to evolve. This looks a little bit more like a car. You can certainly see the drone elements in here. Alex, tell us the main thing from proto prototype number four. For sure. Well, as you can see from the fourth generation, from the third, this resembles way more of a car. Uh, this is a single seater. It's known as the X1, and it was created in 2020. Nice, fantastic. So Alex, what about the prototype number five? So right here we have the prototype fifth generation flying car. This is known as the x X2, and this is a two-seater, uh, very futuristic looking, might, might remind you a little bit of Back to the Future, and this is our fifth generation, which was created in 2021. Yeah, so as you can see, it's got really futuristic looking butterfly doors. Um, there's LCD screens inside, and there's also control panels and buttons for, for the user. This prototype actually has flown about 10,000 times. Oh, fantastic. Amazing. So Alex, what I learned today is the amazing progression here. It obviously started off with a passionate owner, somebody that really had this idea of bringing flying cars to reality that started back in 2013. We've seen the different prototypes, but uh, what, what I want to see right now is what is actually flying right now in 2025 and where is the future of this industry going? Okay, for sure. All right, let's, you. let's go. Let's go. Well, everybody, we've seen the prototypes, but now it's time to see the X3, which is the actual current model that is flying right now in 2025. And this is this incredible vehicle. Let's open up this door. Now we've got a special Hello, surprise. Hello, Mr. Jensen. <laughs> can, I, can, su I, can I give you a ride to your hotel? Oh my gosh, that would be good. Well, guys, long-term friends of the channel, you know who this is. This is Alex from Reporter 5 Media, buddy. Great to so see you So good again. to see you back in China. I had to we're, come in style. We're back in Guangzhou. We're here and we are living the dream. We're doing another walk and talk, but this time we're at an incredible facility, oh, Alex, beautiful. because this is Xiaopeng Aero Halt. And Alex, I know that you have been doing an incredible series on your channel. Yep. Also your work with Ai Chongqing doing an incredible amount of videos about the EV industry. Right. Now guys, many of you who follow the channel for long term, you, you'll know that for many years, Alex and I do these walk and talks in China. But more importantly, what I love, Alex, is your your Canton Fair videos. Mm, thank Those you. videos are the best I've seen on YouTube. I love your passion. So if you're interested in like trade shows and things like that, Alex's channel has all the breakdowns. Alex, I want to know a little bit more about what you've seen because you're here on the ground in China. Yeah. You're attending the trade shows. You're working with EV companies. I mean, I think you'd be hard pressed to find somebody that a foreigner that has your knowledge and insight into the EV industry. So tell me what you've been able to see firsthand being in China the last five years and specifically the advancements in EVs specifically. No problem covering the EV market, but what's happened is, it's, you know, I'm from the city of Chongqing, uh, 32 million plus. Yeah. Went there five years ago, six years ago. A little bit of haze in the air when you right. first get to it. used to be a very big industrial city, still is. Right. But something changed. Yeah. And drastically changed. The new energy vehicle market, this is the city's, uh, we'll call it the automotive city of China. Right. right. Okay. Incredible. The, now, you might think that uh, brings smog to it, but when it, we're talking new energy vehicles, that city has blue skies. Yeah. And it's completely changed the entire dynamic. What does blue skies bring to let's say any city, tourism, opportunities, prosperity. And I've seen a city amazing come from not knowing right. to being covered by just about everybody yeah, in the social absolutely. media platform space. 
So domestically wise, I would say it's probably one of the most popular cities. What else is it doing? It's investing heavy into this new energy vehicle uh, business. Yeah. Today here we're uh, looking at this fantastic thing. Yeah, now, it's incredible, eh? Most people are trying to say, hey, you know, hey guys, th is this the J? I don't know if you remember the Jetsons cartoon, yeah, yeah. okay? Of course. It, it's here. Yeah. And people might say, well, who's gonna have a use to this? You can't fly this in the street. Yeah. This is the, you know, I would say the next phase on where we're going with new energy vehicles. Of course, the viewers are probably already starting here, BYD or yeah, Neo or Zeker or Avatar, yeah. magnificent automobiles. But not only is China involved with that, they're investing in the low altitude economy here. Yeah, and that yeah. is anything you know up to about a thousand uh, meters high right. and below. Now you might say, well, who's gonna buy that? Well, let's talk tourism. Yeah. Let's talk ski resorts. Let's talk wine vineyards, yeah, you know? yeah. let's talk uh, ski resorts, but also that want to go to maybe an elevated part of the hill. Right. Okay. What's their options in any other economy? They're right. not going to hire a helicopter. Right. And with these systems here, a lot of them are autonomous. Of course, it will get to that stage where we won't eventually have to even drive cars. They don't understand what the flying car means, mm. but if we actually look at many different industries, for example, we look at the farming industry. Farming. It's gonna be huge, huge for farming. You know, think about taking care of your crops. You can have vehicles like this. Also, fire rescue. And we talk about huge. The, using the drones for putting out fires and even rescues. And that's it, Cyrus, you know, you mentioned that. First, you mentioned about the farms. Yeah. No longer do you have to take a vehicle out to crush your crops to check out the quality. Yeah, yeah. You get up exactly. and you're in there. Exactly. The second thing that you're saying about the fires, I mean, we are seeing every single year these fire issues in North America oh, are tremendous. growing and growing Unbe and growing. Unbelievable. Well, especially in our two countries, right? Canada, uh, you know, Western British Columbia, every single summer there's massive fires. Unfortunately, we saw, you know, Hawaii was destroyed by fires. Obviously, Maui, Los Angeles was, Jasper. was uh, destroyed by them. So I think you look at a lot of that. Alex, I saw another report where they were actually uh, using some drones and some low altitude yeah. for rescuing people in the ocean and, and lakes and things like that. So, I mean, you have uh, a tremendous amount of technology but also I like what you mentioned earlier about the uh, tourism angle mm -hmm. as well. So I think, you know, what's what's most important here, and I think what the main thing of today's video, what I really want you to take away is that the Chinese are always pushing the boundary of what's going to happen next. And there's an amazing parallel here is, you know, for example, you look at American company like Google, you know, if you're a Google employee in your contract, you can spend about 20% of your time working on another project, like basically working on anything you want. They want to encourage this creativity. They want to encourage, you know, you thinking outside of the box and creating something new. And we see that in China is where, you know, you're going to have entire industries are looking at this, you know, entire industries are saying, look, you know, flying cars, if we can develop this tech, we can probably use it in many sectors like we just talked about, but it is also the future, right? No one, no one else in the world is developing tech like this. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, is this gonna be a point where everybody's got a flying car and you have millions of cars in the air? Uh, not in the foreseeable future, but no, again, I if agree. we want to look at where the technology is going and we have these ideas and these inventions, it comes from these companies like this that are startups, that are inventing the future of technologies. And this is why we are so adamant about this is that you've got to come to China to see the future of our world. Alex, you're in Chongqing. And I mean, you have single-handedly, I would say that you put that city on Thank the map. You. Thank you. You know, last year Chongqing was awarded like most Instagrammable city in the world. I mean, we know the, the skyscrapers, we know the amazing old city there that lights up. Yeah. I mean, it really is spectacular. And it's, it's just amazing to be back here in China this summer to be able to see some tech and see what the future of our industry is. You know, look as, like. as we stand here, you know, this really just makes a person want to dream of what is possible here. That's a good point. I yeah. love that. Absolutely. And I think I think we go back to that. They go back to that prototype, right? The prototype was a flying motorcycle, right? A guy, and you know, he got all the parts off a of Taobao. Oh. So so you have an entrepreneur that, like you said, like it makes you dream of what's possible in the future. So imagine this: you're in your garage, you're ordering parts off of. Taobao, which is your, you know, your Chinese Amazon, you're putting this together and then you jump on this flying motorcycle up a hundred meters in the air. I mean, one roll false move, you're done, right? I mean, you're not surviving that. And so, I mean, it just, but it shows you, you know, the, the passion. And I think that's something that um, I, I don't really know where I, I, I see in such passion like this, except in China, where you have people pushing the boundaries. What can we do? What can we invent? And you don't see it unless you're here on the ground in China. I think there's still this stereotype that, uh, you know, this is just stolen technology. Yes. But let me give you some really stark figures that um, the people should have a look at this. Yeah. Go check out BYD's 
headcount in the company. Yes. It's over one million. Yes. And then go and look on what they have in the research and development department. Right. Over 105,000 employees of the one million, that's over 10% of the staff, yeah. are dreaming. And let's compare that with a Tesla, which I believe there, you know, they would have around 80,000 employees. So you have more people at BYD that are in working in the R&D area than all of Tesla employees. So, I mean, that's your sales team, your marketing team, your every single team that you have, your HR team. And this is, again, we had highlighted that as well here, Alex, earlier in our tour is that 80% of the employees at Xiaopeng Aero Hold, 80% of the employees here, you know, this is a four story building, incredible amount. I mean, but, but three of the floors are R&D. So uh, wow. uh, three of the floors are all engineers here. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, and all, and I think about 45% of them have PhDs. And so you, you look at, well, you know, you start looking at the competition, right? I mean, how, I mean, to anybody that wants to discredit China, that wants to say, hey, China's a copycat nation. China can't invent anything. Well. I'd like to find another company in the world that's inventing this. Alex, when you're standing in front of this vehicle, what does this remind you of? Cybertruck. <laughs> Cybertruck. <laughs> so this is the Chinese Cybertruck. Uh, this is the Xiaopeng Aero Halt truck. So the, for those of you that don't know, this actually folds up. So this folds up, This, you know, the wings would collapse in here and it actually fits in the back of this SUV. Alex, what's the price point on this? Do you know? Yeah, I do know it's about I'm hearing, now they've taken pre-orders on this. Yes. So this just isn't something that's on a brochure. My estimate from my latest video that I uh, recorded a few months ago is about $275,000. Yeah. Now you might think, well, that's a lot of money. Well, go buy a helicopter, yeah. okay? Go get the helicopter license. Yes. And uh, then buy a cyber truck and uh, see what that costs. But the thing is, is what's interesting is, is we still think uh, when we're talking about this thing about dreaming, right? I'd like to have something like this. Usually in other countries, there's massive regulations that make things not really possible. Well, we might be just a few years away from not really needing to fly anything because autonomously, we're just going to be a, a ride along in the passengers. And we might say, well, what are you talking about? You know, Elon Musk, I don't want, I admire Elon Musk and what he's done. It's absolutely impressive. But some of the challenges that he has is once again this r d thing they're trying to push this autonomous car these autonomous taxis these are on the roads in china already they are so alex actually two hundred and seventy-five thousand yeah. usd you think about it so that is the cyber truck that you're standing next to and this also incredible um machine here that would be similar to a helicopter but obviously an Six advanced rotors. drone i mean uh i just incredible. want to add one thing i keep i don't because i'm so excited here right yeah. so I, I don't want to forget these things while we're walking along, but I want to show you something about these trucks here. These, when, when America says, oh, well, we're not interested, we don't want to be part of it. This is a well-known tire uh, manufacturer called Pirelli, yeah. okay? Some of these cars and some of these, uh, you know, new energy vehicles, they are using German parts for brake pads. They are using American tires, like Goodyear tires. So the Chinese are saying, you know what? You guys have made the best tire, you make the best brake pads. We don't need to go there, okay? Yeah. We'll collaborate. And that's why you're seeing these vehicles or these flying cars is China is in a collaboration mode, not a competitive to take everybody out. And that's why when you're seeing, try to understand CATL, the battery manufacturer, CATL is not just about putting it in one car, it's putting in, they're, they're, they're a non-competitive battery manufacturer. That's hard to fathom what that actually yeah, means. Yeah, absolutely. But they just say, you know, we're not a hostile person where we're gonna go in and lower the price here. The entire industry, take them, take them away. Yeah, fantastic. Well, everybody, thank you so much for spending time with us here today on YouTube. It was an absolute pleasure to have Alex from Reporter Fry Media, Alex from Xiaopeng, and also Zach from Zach in China, another YouTuber. And you can just see the passion that we have for making these videos because again, when you're on China and you're on Chinese soil, you absolutely get to see what the future of technology looks like. And we're experiencing it right here in Guangdong, China. Thank you guys for spending some time with us here on YouTube. And we can't wait to bring you more vlogs from amazing China. Let's go.